God bless you for choosing to listen to this anointed message from Dr. Reverend Christopher Abulame of King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is Lord and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations. Oh, please be seated. The Lord bless you. I'm so glad to be here today. It's such a pleasure to be in the presence of Jehovah. And this morning we talked about divine demands. And I truly enjoyed this morning's service. Praise the Lord. I did. Uh, but I know that this one is going to be better than this morning. Say amen. Praise the Lord. And, and I, 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 I want to share with us the test in testimony. The test in testimony. When you find a time, you try to look at the word testimony, the, the beginning of it is test. And somebody said some time ago, he said, testimony means test are many. Uh, when God has given you many tests and somehow you came over it and you didn't even know how you got over it, but you knew that you landed somewhere, glory to God. And you come before God's people, lifting up your hand and just bless the Lord that the Lord had brought you through. Test ah, many. And, and, and I, I just want to look at this topic very briefly today before we go home. And, and, and there's a test in testimony. And in this, you see the power of testimony and the place of testimony and the problem of testimony. Glory to God. And somebody who hears me say there's a problem in testimony, say, I don't want to testify no more, glory to God, because I don't want the problem of testimony. But find out what I'm trying to get at this morning. Praise Jesus. And I, and I picked out a text for today from the book of the beloved John, John's Gospel, chapter 9. John's Gospel, chapter 9. And this is an amazing story. An amazing story. Hallelujah to God. And from verse 6, John chapter 9, from verse 6, and the scripture said, I'm going to be reading message translation this morning. If you have your King James Version, the KJV, that's my favorite. But sometimes I do move back in between translations for proper understanding. Uh, but I like the uh, 1611 King, King James Version because it says it's the authorized version. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. For the purpose of understanding and detail, I have chosen to read today from the message translation. And the Bible says, and he said this, and then spake in the dust, made a clay paste with the saliva. My God. Jesus met a man that was blind. And the method of God to heal that man completely contradicted science. I was trying to put some medicine on one of our sons, Ethan's eyes. Because he's been having allergies. And the next thing my wife said, say, you can't do that until you wash your hands. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And I had to go wash my hands to apply medicine to the eye. But here Jesus Christ did what? Spit on the ground. My God. Glory to God. All of the bacteria, everything. And not only the one that comes out of his spit, but the one on the dust. He totally, totally defied microbiology, science, pathology, whatever it is. And the Bible say, Christ, don't do this at home. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He said, Jesus spit on the dust and made a clay paste with the saliva and then rubbed the paste on the blind man's eye. Now, think about it. If you were this man, you came to be healed by the great physicians. And he said to you, wait a moment. I'm going to speak underground. The moment you see the speak coming underground, some of us are just going to disappear. I say, well, I don't think I need this. <laughs> Glory to God. 
Let the scriptures say he made the paste. And there's something about God that is different and it goes far beyond human understanding. As the heavens are farther from the earth, so his ways are far from us. When God places a demand on your life, that's the reason why he's doing it. And so much time we don't understand why. And men and women of faith, we just go along in the ride. Because we have implicit, absolute trust in this God that he got it together. Praise the Lord. And the scripture says he commanded him and said, Go, wash at the pool of Siloam. And the man went after the application. And wash. When he did what Christ said, the Bible said, the eyes were open. His eye was open, a consequence of a paste made out of saliva. You cannot understand how that can be. And that's why it is miracle. Miracle is that thing that goes beyond human understanding and divine supernatural intervention in the affairs of man. When God superimposes power and his will on my circumstance, the product of it is what we call miracle. And so what happens here that defy human understanding, the product was a miracle. The man saw. And now, follow me with this story. And soon, the town was buzzing. Soon, the town was buzzing. The town ought to buzz because I believe that those who saw what happened went out and told everybody we have never seen anything like this. That a man made a paste of saliva, slapped it on a man's eye, told him to go wash in the pool, and the man came back seeing. And scriptures say there was buzz in town. God is about to bring me to a place where there will be buzz in town. Glory to God. And I believe the same thing with you in the name of Jesus. You ought to give God praise for what he wants to do in your life in the name of Jesus. And scripture continues to say, his relatives, those who year after year had seen him as a blind man begging we are saying his relatives and those who saw him when he was blind now sees him when he can see God just turned his story into a song and those who saw him before and now sees him could not recognize him no more. And that I said in miracles that God would do in your life that those who saw you yesterday and they see you today cannot recognize you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's what I believe for somebody here today. That the Lord is going to surprise you. Not only surprise you, but surprise those around you in the name of Jesus Christ. Even his relative and those who year after year, year after year, the man carried this burden of blindness. Nobody could help him. And I come to realize in life that my help does not come from the east doesn't come from the north, doesn't come from the south, or come from the west. Sometimes men may promote you, but they have the same power to demote you. Uh, but I know one God who when he places you up, no man can bring you down. When he seats you up, no man can unseat you. I, I'd rather go to that God for my blessings. Glory to God. And one thing I just love about him, he, did, he does not need to have people's vote to bless me. Uh, he doesn't need to consult with somebody, not even the pastor of the church, nor the bishop of the congregation. He just blesses me anyhow. 
I thank God that I can come by the new and the living way, even by the blood of the Lamb. I can come when I be in the presence of the Lord, open my mouth and say, God, you know what I'm going through right now. I can trust you with my secret. Oh God, you will never condemn me. You take me just as I am. And I know one thing that you will fix me up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody help me praise him right here. Uh, uh, the Bible says year after year. There are some conditions that persist with a man or woman year after year. And the reason it goes year after year is because there's no guarantor of help from anywhere. And he had been blind. I believe from, the, from birth he had been blind. And the Bible says that folk who knew him and they saw him. And even his relative saw him this day after Jesus had performed miracle in his life. And they said not only that the man was blind, the man was also begging. The man was blind and begging. And they saw him when he was blind and begging. And the relative could not deliver him from begging. Glory to God. And some of you who rely on your relative and sometimes get upset because your relative couldn't come help you, you might need to ask this blind man what was his attitude and his response that even his relative could not help him. Again, praise the Lord, we don't rely on them for our help. We rely on the Almighty God. That's why we come to church. That's why we we'll pray. That's why we fast. That's why we we'll look up to the hills. That's why we we'll look to him. That's why we we'll call on him as the servant. Look up to the eye of the mistress. And, and the maidens look up to the eyes of the mistress. So our eyes are upon you, O Lord, until thou will show us mercy. When God shows me mercy, shows you mercy because he said, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy and compassion on whom I will have compassion. When he throws out his compassion on my way and slaps me with his mercy, ain't nobody can stop me to get to my promised land. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter the conditions that surround me. This condition cannot overcome the mercy of God, somebody. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how deep it is where I'm at. Those things cannot stop the love of God. Hallelujah. That's my confidence this morning. And so the Bible says here, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, and this man had been a blind man and begging. And the relatives and the friends and all of those who knew him said, and now look at what they said. Look at what they say, brothers and sisters. This, this is so profound. He said, why is it that this man we knew who sat here and begged? Others said, it is him, all right. But others objected. It is not the same man at all. It just looked like him. My God. Even his relative. When they saw his miracle. And his testimony. The Bible said even his relative could not figure out. This man. Where he came out of. And here was a man who woke up in the morning. And every man knew him as a blind beggar. But when he was coming back in the evening, they could not recognize him. And they sat at their soliloquies and said to themselves, Is it him? And some said, Why is he seeing? Folk had problem with his miracle. Glory to God. Now, they, they could not help him, but they had a problem with his helper. My God, glory to God. They couldn't save him. They had a problem with his Savior. Have you ever been in a situation where folks are attacking your help? Glory to God. They're, they're attacking the one whom the Lord has sent to deliver you. They're attacking your deliverer. Not, not them, because they don't want you to get out. 
of the situation that you be. They just love you to be where you be. Glory to God. But you got to be able to bring your head above the water and take a breath again and said, I know you guys want me to be on, but I refuse to be on. The, I'm coming right up in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. And, and see what scriptures say here. And then in verse 10, they said, why? Glory to God. Did your eye get open? How? Did it happen? The why and the how only tells me, number one, it was unexpected. It was unexpected. Some of us sitting here today, folk have completely undermined your capacity and your ability to ever have a breakthrough. You're sitting here today, some of us completely have been undermined by folk that you will never, never be who God has made you to be. In other words, they love it when you are in misery. Glory to God. They love it when you're in pain. The more pain you express, the better they accept you. But when you start to say, I feel better in my legs, I feel better in my hand, the acceptance begins to diminish. And you wonder why I thought that they should be rejoicing in my healing. But how come they're feeling bad about my healer and my healing? Glory to God. And sometimes our reaction is very confusing because the word by itself, it is so confusing. You see, folk that you love and you think they love you, and the moment you start to experience some respite in life, things start to turn against you, and you wonder why. And, and so they said to him, I mean, I'm asking myself as I read this, what is the purpose of these questions? A man got a testimony. A man has healing in his eyes. Could not see. Sitting there begging. And then they're querying every step of that testimony. Why did you get the breakthrough? How did it happen? What happened to you? Where? How? Who did it for? You're not qualified to have this. You don't have no education. How come you got this? You have no support. How come you got that? You got nothing. How did you get it? What is the purpose of that question? You would think that when they saw this man... Everybody would have been singing Hosanna to the Lord in the highest. It only shows to us that life is not always a straight line. Glory to God. That what you think about life itself, it is not the way it presents itself to you. And that's why most times we are confused about situations like this. And God is gracious to put them in the Bible to teach us some lessons about the world we live in. There is power in testimony. And now, think about the woman with the issue of love, for instance. And, and she, she set out and she said, uh, the Bible says that she had, she had spent everything, everything that she had, all her money, everything was gone. She couldn't get help from any doctor, couldn't get help from any relative, couldn't get help from the high priest, nobody could help her. Until the day that she heard that there was a man who was coming to town in the name of Jesus. And I hear all the people. And she summoned up her faith to go receive her miracle. And if you understand the state of this woman, 
You understand the very odds that were against her, stacked up against her face. But her faith, the faith in her, helped her to overcome every odd that was stacked at her face. Glory to God. And I wish and pray that all of us learn to hold on to our faith. Even in very precarious situations. Because your faith is going to make you overcome everything that comes at you. Because the Bible says that the righteous shall live by faith. And as she went for her miracle... The men and the women, everybody, the, the, the multitude was against her. Multitude couldn't let her go through. But in her frailty, sometimes you just got to put, put, pick yourself up with your last strength. After you have done all, you've expended everything. Your spiritual capital is gone. All you have is a muscle of strength. And sometimes you still need to learn on that staff like Jacob did. And this frail woman who had no more strength but said that this is not going to kill me. Glory to God. It's not going to kill me. And I think that there are certain situations in life where you have to just tell yourself, you think that it's in my life cannot kill me. I, I, I will outlive you. And I believe in the name of Jesus that each and every one of us here today and those who are listening across the world, that we are going to outlive all of our problems and our conditions in the name of Jesus Christ. And she did get her miracle that in the process of the chaos, and everybody trying to get the attention of Christ and try to touch Jesus. And she came to touch the tussle of his garment. And the moment the Bible says that she got her healed. And Jesus turned around and said, who touched? There are touches of curiosity and touches of faith. And there are many people who were there. If you understand that street in those days were very narrow. And so you had a multitude walking on that street with Jesus. Everyone surrounded Jesus and everybody tried to touch him. But there was somebody who came different. And she came through in the middle of the crowd and took the tussle of the garment of Jesus. She got her healed. Don't, don't, don't be in church out of curiosity. What is he going to do for the pastor? What is he going to do for this? You come by faith and say, God, I was glad when this said, let us go into the house of the Lord. I need something in my life that needs to be fixed. Oh, God, I pray today, fix my problem. And I believe it. And when you walk out these doors, you have strong faith in God that because he did it before, he's going to do it just again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And return to the story of this man. The Bible say they began to ask the questions. How did your eyes, they came to him, how did your eyes get open? This is like combative tone. How did you get the miracle? I thought you would never have your miracle. I thought you were going to die black. I thought you were always going to be a beggar. How come out there you have a miracle? This is the question. These are his relatives. These are the same folk who led him to the temple gate to beg. These are the same people who brought him to the side of the road to beg. Now when his eyes was open, they're asking him, what audacity do you have to see like the rest of us? <laughs> I'm going to shock you with this. Your testimony or your miracle would do one or two things or both. You have more friends because 
miracles, success, good things always attract friendship. But you're going to have more enemies. Because there will be folk who will, who will despise what the Lord has done in your life. Get ready. And prepare in your mind because God is about to heat you with heaven's power that your mind will now be able to understand and comprehend what the Lord is doing in your life. You get up in the morning and say, God, how did I get here? What are you doing? I cannot understand. This is beyond my understanding. God is about to do something. Hallelujah. But with it, you'll be surprised all the doors who will appreciate what God has done in your life and say I want to be a friend with you because I just like what the Lord is doing for you. I just like the miracles that God is doing for you and I've been praying for the same miracle and I want to be with you so you can teach me how to do it. And you'll be folk who've been with you and especially those who've been with you for a while. Especially those who've been with you, because these are his relatives. Is it, the other people who didn't really know him, some of them didn't really care about what was going on in this man's life. They just rejoiced and said, oh, we heard, we heard that Jesus did another miracle again. He did it with a with speak and made a paste and put a man's eye and the man see you. Praise the Lord for Jesus. And that just happened. But you, 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 that, he, his, his brothers and his relatives say, come on here. How did you get miracle? And you're wondering. You all are supposed to be happy. You all are supposed to be testifying. You are supposed to be happy that you no longer can carry this man to the side of the road to beg. There are sometimes folk just enjoy giving you handout. <laughs> So you can come back and say, thank you, sir. And the next month, give you. That is more than captivity and more than slavery. It's new age slavery when folk want you to depend on them for everything and they're happy doing it. And will never want you to come to a place where you can say, no, I don't need it. I'm on my own now. I'm moving out tomorrow. I've been staying under your roof for five years, but I'm moving out now. I, the Lord just blessed me with a home, and I'm going to my home. Glory to God. He just gave me a car. I'm riding my own car now. Glory to God. Now, folks, you don't like it. And you cannot apologize for that. It's not your fault. It's just your time. When God brings you to your season of breakthrough, season of uplifting, all I need to say, it is not my fault. I didn't ask for it. It is just my time. Glory be to the name of the Lord. And I owe nobody apologies. Somebody help me praise him here. And the query, how... He got saved, he got healed, where he got healed, who healed him. And then he said, verse 11, and a man named Jesus. And he said it just as this, a man named Jesus. You cannot be ashamed to tell how God had saved you. You can never be ashamed. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. There's no testimony in my life that I, I'm ashamed to tell you about. Because in that test, there were many, the Lord brought out a testimony. And the reason for that testimony, that's why the Lord turned around when that woman was healed. And he said, who touched me? And he needed to say, who touched me, so that there would be an affirmation that somebody got a miracle in the midst of this chaos. And I thank God that he can bring order in chaos. Glory to God. 
When he created the world, if you go back to the book of Genesis, cosmos, there was chaos in the world. And the Lord said, let there be light. In other words, I speak order into your chaos. And God is able to bring them all together for his glory and for your blessing. Somebody ought to give him praise this morning. Glory to God. And he said, a man named Jesus made a paste and rubbed it on my eyes and told me, go to shallow and wash. And I did what he said. When I wash and I see, oh, I saw. And now they said, okay, where is he? Now, they've been querying his healing. And now they're querying the one who healed him. Where is he? Where did he come from? They're asking the source of it. What is your business? I preached a word the other day. I said, mind your own business. One of my best sermons, you can go get the tape. They needed to mind their own business. And there are folk who don't mind their business. All they're doing is talking about, see, I... I I have come to understanding, and I hope this will help you. Those of you who feel bad because people talk about you, feel good. You know why I say feel good? It's because I am important enough to occupy your time. <laughs> Glory to God. And so you're spending so much time not thinking about yourself, you're talking about me. I must be so important to you to occupy your time. Right on, baby. Keep talking about me. Glory to God. And I also know that folk don't talk about the crazy man in downtown. They don't talk about those. When you're watching TV, who, who, who do you see them talk about? Important people. Talk about the president. Talk about the governor. The same thing you said when the governor says it, they said the governor said it. Nobody's going to talk about what you said. So what occupies the television is the rich and famous. And so when, when somebody sits there and is talking about it, it's because you are famous. Glory to God. If you're not famous, they will have no regard for you, but the Lord has brought you to a place with some level of glory that somebody decide to get on the phone, pay the bills of that phone to talk about me, and when I hear about it, I say, God, I thank you because I'm so important that folks are talking about me. What did Jesus say? Jesus called them all. He said, who is talking about me today? What are they saying about me? And they all say, well, you know, they've been talking about you, Christ. They said, you are this, you're there, you're a prophet, you're there, you're there. They said, what do you say? I said, you're the son of God. You're the Christ, the son of the living God. He said, flesh and blood have not revealed that to you. But the spirit which is in heaven. And now, what am I trying to say? Don't feel bad. When somebody tells you that folks are talking about you. Now they talked about this man. They told him, we need to know who healed you. Who is that Jesus that has the audacity to heal you? We want you to remain blind. And then somebody came along and opened your eyes. Who blessed you? You've been earning $10 an hour. And now for some reason you're getting $50 an hour. How did you get there? And folk are just asking those questions. And you ought to give God the glory. And I just like this man here. He said, the Lord did it for me. If you want to be jealous, stay jealous. As a matter of fact, he's going to do one more tomorrow. Because I'm going to him right now. He's going to do one more tomorrow. And he's going to do one more again and again and again. And I'm going to see how you can handle it. There are folks that cannot handle you. As a matter of fact, when you have God, they just can't understand you because they cannot understand your God. 
And, and I said, he told me to do this show. They said, where is he? And the man said, I don't know. You find out. And they matched the man. I'm just about closing now. Bible said they matched the man to the Pharisee. They reported him to the authority. They matched him to the, to the Pharisee. This day when Jesus made the pace and healed his blindness was the Sabbath day. Now they became religious. Became religious. You have folk who are so religious. And they say, you know, you know the Bible says that uh, Christians are supposed to be poor people. Uh, you know, Christian, Christians are supposed to be doing what you're doing. Who told you? What, who made you judge over the Bible? If the Lord said he wants to bless me, who gives you the authority to override what Jehovah said? Who made you the assistant of the Holy Spirit to query what the Holy Spirit is about to do in my life? And they got religious. What has the Sabbath day got to do with a man who's been blind from birth and needed to be healed? What the Sabbath? If he got healed on Monday, what does it mean? If he got healed on Sunday morning, what does that mean to you? They got religious about it to try to minimize what the Lord has done in his life. Don't let nobody throw religion at you. Tell them, open it up in the Bible. Tell me in the scripture where the Bible says all Christians ought to be poor. Tell me. You will not find it. Tell me where the Bible says that everybody needs to be blind. Everybody needs to be a beggar. Tell me where is written the Bible. And they brought him and said, well, he, he got healed on the Sabbath day. Because the Sabbath day got to do with what has just happened. The Pharisee greet him again on how he had come to see. Can you imagine this? They brought him on trial, tried his miracle, tried his testimony, and said, why and how? How did you get this healing that you have? He said, again, it is not my fault. It is just my time. I met a man. He looked at me. He made the pain slap in my eyes. He said, go once and I did and I can see. That's all. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, mommy. What is your problem about my healing? <laughs> Glory to God. And, and, then, and then some of the Pharisees, chapter verse 16, some of the Pharisees said, obviously, this man cannot be from God. Now they brought God into the equation. This man cannot be from God. What, what you have cannot be from God. You must be having some voodoo thing because it's impossible for a man to be blind yesterday and now is seeing. It's impossible for a man who had no job yesterday, now he just got a six-figure salary. How is that possible? He had no education. He never went to school, but now he got all of it. How is it possible? America, there is no success in America. How is he successful? He is a foreigner, but now he took over the country. How is it possible? Because when God Almighty comes in his power and promotes a man, he blows the mind of everybody. And obviously this man can't come from the, from the Lord because he didn't keep the servant. The others counted. How can a bad man do miracle? God revealing things like this. There was no split in their rank. Or there was a split in their rank. And they began to argue. And they came back to the blind man and said, You are the expert. He opened your eyes. What do you say about him? He said, He's a prophet. And in verse 18, And the Jews did not believe him. Just as some folk would not believe your God and believe who had brought you through and brought you on to a place where God wants you to be, so they called his parents. Now they left him alone, they talked to him, interrogated him, quizzed him, talked about Jesus, couldn't get him, talked about his Sabbath, brought religion into it and brought God into the whole thing. And they said, if we can't get an answer from him, we can't get an answer from Jesus, God is not talking to us about this, then we need to get his parents. 
And they got his parents and said to them, Is this your son? And, and the one who say was born blind, <laughs> glory to God. The, the question itself betrays the people who's asking the question. They called his parents. They knew that this was his parent. And then they asking his parent, is this your son that was born blind? Now, have you ever seen a parent who can no longer recognize his son? He must have gotten some amnesia or something happened to him or her. And they, all of these questions, that the bottom line was that they want to minimize the testimony and quench entirely what the Lord has done for this man. And 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 they quiz the parents and, and, and look at what the parents said. The parents said, We know he's our son. Of course we know. And we know he was born blind. Now the testimony is getting really complete. We know that he is our son. And we know that he was born blind. And then it goes on. But we don't know <laughs> how he came to see. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Haven't a clue about who opened his eyes. In other words, the miracle is undeniable. You can't deny it. It truly happened. But all that we can say is that is our son, he was born blind, but how he saw, we have no clue. Glory to God. We don't know how this happened to him. And, and they began to say, why don't you ask him? <laughs> Amen. Their parents looked at the interrogators and said, why? Don't you ask the man who received the miracle. Don't ask me, ask him. And he said he's a grown man and can speak for himself. His parents were telling like this because they were intimidated by the Jewish leader. There are those who will want to intimidate you to submit your testimony intimidate you to release your testimony intimidate you to deny your miracle intimidate you to deny your God and all of those things are distractors in life because when God promotes a man or woman he's trying to bring him to his Rehoboth where he makes many more room for him but what the enemy and the People, this is what I want to do, is to bring you to a place of intimidation where you submit your miracle to them and lose the entire future that God has for you. And so they intimidated them. And then the Bible says, and the parents said to them, ask him, he's a grown-up man, 24 and they call the man back the second time. This is just a man who got a miracle. Why has his miracle created uproar in the town? And truly, truly, there are some miracles that create uproar in the family. Because everybody had written your story and they have closed the chapter and said, this one is gone, can never be anything in life. And somehow, some way, through the act of God, here you are, standing up again. And everybody is amazed. How did this happen? We thought that this boy would never get anywhere in life. But somehow, we can see the manifest glory and presence in his life. Some miracle caused uproar in the family. There are miracles that cause uproar in the neighborhood. We are those who used to say, hi, when you come in, they just look like they don't see you no more. They drive as fast as they can to ignore you because they are amazed 
of how you broke out of them. You know, it's so amazing sometimes you're with a group of people, you're all, you're all poor and, and trying to survive, and somehow you got a little breakthrough out of it. All of them band together against you now. You become a common enemy. How is that? Can't understand it. But the Bible just give us a glimpse of here. Second time they call him, and the man who had been blind told them, give credit to God. Give glory to God for everything he's done for me. We know that this man is, is, is an impulsion. He said, he replied, I know nothing about the one way or the other. But I know one thing for sure. Once I was blind, now I see. End of story. What he's saying, I have no time to try to explain to anybody how I came through this miracle, how it happened. That is completely immaterial. That's not relevant to the story. That's not going to help me. What is important here is that one time I had a story, but now I have a song. One time I was blind, but now I see. One time I got nothing in my refrigerator. Now I have four refrigerators full of stuff. Glory to God. One time I was walking on my feet, but now I can drop myself. One time I was squatting with somebody, now I'm on my own. Glory to God. That's what matters. Whatever happened in between, it's none of my business. It's not my fault. It is just my time. Somebody give him glory here. Give him glory now. Give him glory now. Give him praise right now. One prayer you're going to pray tonight, today as you close, as we close in this house, is to tell God, whatever is against my testimony and against my breakthrough, Lord, scatter them in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth, begin to pray this morning. Begin to call on the name of the Lord. Whatever is against your breakthrough, those who gather themselves together against your testimony, that they say your testimony will never agree. Tell the Lord in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, scatter them today. Release the power of God. Release the power of Jehovah. Somebody pray. Somebody pray very quickly. We're just about done today. Ah, my God, my God. God is doing something in somebody's life right now. God is doing something. God is doing something right now. In the name of Jesus. God is doing something right now. In the name of Jesus. God is doing something right now. Thank you, Father. Glory to your name. Oh, yes, our testimonies are going to be many. In the mighty name of Jesus. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks about it. It doesn't matter what folks do about it. We, we, we agree today in the name of Jesus that nothing will destroy our testimony. In the name of Jesus. It shall not be taken from us in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we give you the glory. We give you the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. And a mighty big amen. Come on. If you have been blessed by this message or have a prayer request, we would like to hear about it. Please call us at 401-954-6188 or visit our website at www.kingstabernacle.org. You are also welcome to join us on Sundays for services beginning at 8.30, 10 a.m. or 6 p.m and for Wednesday Bible studies at 7 p.m. We are located at 500 Greenville Avenue in Johnston, Rhode Island. Please remember that you are always welcome at King's Tabernacle where Jesus Christ is Lord and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations.